Amen. Yeah, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Yeah. For once again, God has blessed us to be here on this morning uh, for the purpose of worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And one of the benefits of our congregating, of our coming together, is we have an opportunity to invest in one another. Yes, yeah. sir. As we often say on Sunday mornings here at Hellsmith, there's a whole lot of other things that people will try to invest into us, amen, somebody, oh, amen. that are drastically different than what we, the children of God, invest into each other. Yes, amen. Sir. amen. We're glad, uh, we're glad to see uh, our sister Vivian yes. with us. Yeah, we Amen. missed you. Amen. Yes. And yes, we sir. prayed for you. Yes. And yes. we're so glad that you're here uh, this morning. And we will continue to pray for you and your family mm -hmm. as you all adjust to the passing of your brother. May God continue to bless you. Now, as also has been stated earlier, let us continue to pray for those who are in need of prayer. Uh, various names were mentioned, Sister Henderson, Sister Nay, yes. Sister Lewis, as well as others. As, and also let us continue to be mindful of the requests that were expressed earlier in our hearing yeah. as well. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse number one. Thank you for the scriptures that have been read for the prayers that have been prayed and the songs that have been sung. And Brother Massey selected some songs, uh, one in particular, uh, it won't be very long that I hadn't sung in years. Yeah. You know, that's one of those those songs that I you normally don't hear until I, I go to East Texas. <laughs> Amen, yeah, somebody. <laughs> But uh, when we look at life in comparison to eternity, it really won't be very long. It won't, that's right. it that's won't so. be very long. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad you sung that first before, the, before I got up because, right. you know, people have been known to use that song to send a subliminal message to the preacher. <laughs> 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 Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse number 1. Listen to what the Bible says. Therefore, I'm reading from the New King James, we also are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Here's the part I want us to get to. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares our beset, if you have the King James Version, us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And the title of the message this morning, as was stated so eloquently by Brother Zach Owens, Man. Man. what will be new for you mm -hmm. in 2024? All right. The new year it ushers in a series of changes. New laws go into effect. Prices go up. New training requirements at work. Mm -hmm. Maybe even a new raise, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. New Year's resolutions, or if we're honest about it, we should call them New Year's solutions yes. because we develop resolutions to address something that we would like to solve in our lives the new year, we reach a different point in age chronologically and in some instances when we go to the doctors and we are a year older, we, we get a different set of living instructions. Perhaps 2024 may be a milestone year for some. Um, you know, the milestone years where you reach 30, 40, 50, and, and after 50, your milestones are in increments of five, you know. Mm -hmm. they, you know, people have the big celebrations at 40 and 50, and afterwards another big celebration at 55 and 60, and, and another one at 65. 
but 2024 might be a milestone year for some. Yes. Uh, not only with birthdays, but other events like anniversaries, be it marriage or work. In June of this year, Rosemary and I will celebrate 20 years of, of being married. Amen. Uh, and some of us may have those extra years at the workplace where we where we're able to retire. Hey Amen. Look, somebody eyes got real big sitting over here. I ain't gonna call them out. But you know, on some on some jobs you have years of service plus age equals you know, has to equal eighty or some number that's been designated by the place where you work and that extra year in two thousand twenty four either puts you closer to that mark or right at that mark. Hmm. You know, two thousand twenty four holds different things for different people. Yeah. And not only are there new things in our regular daily routines of living, but in our kingdom work, we may decide that this is the year that we do something we've never been that we've never done before. Whether it's deciding to teach if you've never taught, um, serving in a new capacity, or even choosing to mentor someone spiritually. But whatever new thing it may be, remember that in order to take advantage of it, we got to leave something behind. Mm. I heard someone, I heard a preacher say one time that sometimes you got to give up what you can't keep in order to get what you can't lose. Mm. And in our passage, when we see the Hebrew writer giving instructions, he says, therefore, we need to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Why is that? Because we have a race to run. What does the Hebrew writer say about this race? It says that this race will require endurance and that it has been set before us. Uh, let's talk about the endurance piece, the set before us piece, and then we'll take a step back and talk about the giving up piece. Uh, the endurance piece that lets us know that we're working against something that is in opposition to us. Just as a regular uh, marathon runner or even a sprinter, mm -hmm. when they are running, when they are participating in that activity, yeah. there are so many muscles involved in that and all of those muscles are working together in, in concert, if you will, against the pull of gravity. Yeah. And if our hearts are not conditioned for that, then that activity will take a whole lot out of us. Yes, sir. But after a while when we run, though we will still get tired, our bodies will adjust to the activity, amen, amen. And, amen. and we can run just a little longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what do we know about this race, mm -hmm. this race called life, this yeah. living race? Yeah. The Bible says that it has been set before all us. Right, all right. Just as I pick up these glasses mm -hmm. off this podium and I set the glasses right here before me, yeah. he wants us to know that this race that we're running is not a mystery. All right. It may be a mystery for us because we live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. But it's not a mystery for the one who set it before us. Okay. Well, who set the race before us? As we read in verse number two, we see where Jesus is called the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Which lets us know that if there's anything going on or anything that we're participating in, especially uh, this faith wall called life, Jesus knows what it, what it holds from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. yes, Why is that? Because he's the author and he's the finisher. Yes. Sir. So he authored and finished this life right. and he set it down before us and said, my son, my daughter, I want you to trust me enough to run this path that I've designated for you. Mm -hmm. And if you stay on my course, and in a matter of time, you will meet me at the finish line. Mm -hmm. But I need you to stay, he needs us rather to stay focused, and he needs us to run effectively. How do we run effectively? By laying aside every weight and all of the sin that so easily beset us. Am I making yes, sense this morning? Yes, when we look at the Christian walk, there are different instances in Scripture where we're told to lay something aside and to pick some things up. Please turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 20. In Ephesians 
chapter 4. Listen to what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 20. The Bible says, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have learned him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. Yeah. The old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. Yeah. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah. And that you put on the new man yeah. which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. And so the apostle Paul tells us here in Ephesians chapter 4 that based on what we've learned in Christ, if we're going to live for him, if we're going to live this race, run this race rather, effectively and efficiently, then we got to put off the old man and all of his conduct and put on the new man. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense this morning? Yes, he says here, and we see it in here in verse 22, put off concerning your former conduct. Uh -huh. Now he's letting us know that all of the things that were, that were pre-baptism, all of the sin that we indulged in, that controlled us, he says, leave it there and don't pick it up. All right. But if we find ourselves mixed up in that stuff again, throw it away. Mm. Why? Because we have a race to run. Yes, sir. We have a race to live, if you don't mind me saying it that way. Yes, but he doesn't leave us living a life of uh, ambiguity, if you will. He says, when you put something down and you want to keep running, I need you to pick something up. Right. And what is it that we pick up? We put on the new man. And we run the life, we run the race of the new man. Yeah. And yeah. why is it important that we run the race or live the life of the new man? Because the new man was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Yeah. In other words, the new man was designed and fashioned by God's righteous template. Yeah. And what the righteous template does is it positions us to, uh, to be holy. What do you mean by being holy? Holy means to be pulled and separated from the world. Okay. We know we've heard it often said that we live in the world, but not of the world. Yes, well, what holiness does, it is our way of, it is God's way of allowing us, rather, to live in, yet not be of. Yeah. Yes, sir. What else does holiness do? Holiness, it, is, uh, it, it positions us to be a part of God's sanctification process. And what his sanctification process does mm -hmm. is it molds us, it fashions us, so that we can get closer to his standard of holiness. Right. One common theme that we see throughout the scripture is God telling his people to be holy as he is holy. So he is the standard of holiness. Right, right. He positions us to run in a, on, a, on, a, on a holy track, if you will. Right. And on this holy track, he says, throw away everything that is not conducive or beneficial for you and I to run this race. Yeah. And while we're running and throwing things away, he's putting us through a process where we can get closer and closer to meet his standard of holiness. Am I making sense yes, this morning, sir. church? Amen, brother. So we got to lay some stuff aside. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. In Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. In Romans chapter 13, listen to what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 11, verse, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 13, rather, Verse number 11, Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. The Bible says, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Now, if we don't get verse 11 and 12 right, 13 and 14 don't mean anything. He says, and that knowing the time 
that now it is high time. Why is that phrase high time important? And why is it important that we understand that phrase high time that is mentioned in verse 11 in order for verse 13 and 14 to make sense? The phrase high time lets us know that there should be a sense of urgency because our salvation is closer now than it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, Brother Thorne? We've been baptized. Yes, we have. We've been washed in His blood. Yes, we have. So why are you saying that salvation is nearer than when we first believed? Well, in this context, when it talks about our salvation being nearer, it's referring to the return of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And each and every day we live, we get closer and closer to the day that the Lord returns. Mm -hmm. And because we've gotten closer and closer over the years to the day of the Lord's return, yes. Paul says that we need to be ready now even more so than we were yesterday. Yes, sir. Because if we look at the law of probability and statistics, it's a greater chance that he's going to come in the near future than he did in the yesterdays of the past. Yes, sir. And so if we don't, <coughs> excuse me, understand that the reality of the Lord's return is near, then verses 13 and 14 doesn't mean anything. In other words, if we don't believe that Jesus is going to deliver on his promise yeah. of coming back, executing judgment yeah. on those who don't know him and have not obeyed him, it doesn't do any good to talk about what to put off and put on. Because we got to get that part understood first. Yes, and yeah. once we understand that part, then we can talk about what to put off and what to put on. Amen. He says, once we understand that part, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Yeah. Simply put, take that lifestyle off that doesn't align with the will of God yeah. and exchange it for the lifestyle of Jesus Christ yeah. that he laid out before us so that when we live, we will be able to say the, the words that were spoken in Philippians 1, that it is not I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Yeah. And church family, what I ask us to think about as we run this race, what are we willing to give up in exchange for being able to run it efficiently and as effectively as we possibly can. Yeah, yeah. There are instances of in which people gave up something in order to gain in Christ. Uh -huh. Please turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 9. Listen to what the Bible says. For they themselves declare concerning us what matter of entry we had to you. Here's the part I want to get to. And how you turned to God mm -hmm. from idols to serve the living and true God. Mm -hmm. Do we see that? Yes, the Thessalonians gave up idolatry. Yes. Turned from them and turned to God. Mm -hmm. In other words, when they made the commitment to run the race based on the things that they learned from Paul and from Silas and Timothy interacting with them, they said, okay, idolatry, I'm throwing you aside because I'm getting ready to run a new race. Yeah. And when they threw idolatry aside, they turned from the idols and they turned to God. Yeah. Why is that? Because they were running on a new course and their lives were headed in a different direction as a result of it. Right. Jesus talks about giving up something in order to gain something in Luke chapter 9, verse number 23. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 9 and meet me at verse number 23 in Luke chapter 9. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, uh, verse number 23. Jesus is speaking. He said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. He says, if we want to follow him, if we want to live for him, yeah. if we want to run the race that he set before us, yeah. we got to take self and our desires and cast them aside. Mm -hmm. And instead... 
pick up his cross All right. and then follow him. Yeah. He says, and let me make sure, let me go through this again. All right. If anyone, let him deny himself and pick up his cross daily mm -hmm. and follow me. Pick up our crosses daily. That refers to the responsibility yeah. that comes along with being a child of God. Yes. All right. All right. One thing to remember about children of God is, to, is we have influence. And with influence comes responsibility. Yes. Yes. And the responsibility that we have with our influence is to imitate the life of Christ each and every day. Yeah. Do we see it in the Bible where it says, take up his cross daily? Yes. What Jesus is saying each and every day, yeah. when we run this race, yeah. Yeah. if we want to get to where he is, mm -hmm. every day we got to pick up the responsibility of that cross yeah. so that we can run the race that he set before us. Right, and the good thing about running the race uh -huh. that he set before us, even though it has, even though it drains our endurance, is that by faith in him, we know how it will end. Yes, right. sir. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I have some advice to give us. Mm -hmm. Now as we return to Hebrews 12, that part about the sin that so easily beset us, yeah. mm -hmm. I feel pretty confident we understand that notion. Uh, for the most part, as God's people, we try to do right. Sometimes we miss the mark, but we hit, but we miss the mark aiming at the right target. Is that all right? All right. You know, we, we, well, okay, I'm not condoning sin by any means, yes, sir. Yes, sir. but what I am saying is that being familiar with the struggle, sometimes we miss the mark aiming for the right target. Yeah, but I want to get to that part about laying aside the weight. Yeah. See, the weight is listed separately from sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the question that I have is that in order for us to have a different 2024, yeah. what are we going to lay aside in order for that to happen? All right. What are we going to do differently in our lives yeah. so that we can have a different set of experiences than we had in 2023? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I remember when I was in a, uh, in a leadership role in one of my past jobs. When we would have our quarterly meetings and go through that P&L and go through everybody's performance, we would have to write down three things, uh, something that we would start doing, something that we would stop doing, and something we'd continue doing. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to write down three of those things in each category. Somebody laughing because y'all probably had to do the same thing, right? And all it was was they wanted a document to hold against you in case things went hey, amen, somebody. But as we look at our faith wall, and when it comes to laying aside our, the weights, yeah. I challenge us to start doing some things different. Yeah. Ask ourselves, what are we going to start doing different? Right. Let me throw a word out there called budget. And I know when we think of budget, we automatically go to that money. Amen, somebody. Yes, sir. And we should budget our money. Yep. If God blessed us with it, he expects us to be responsible enough to budget it and manage it wisely. Right. But nevertheless, he not only blessed us with money, he blessed us with time and he blessed us with talent. And what I encourage each of us to do if, we are, if we're not doing it already is budget our time and budget our talent. Come on. Don't waste time with things that are not beneficial to 